Come closer, come closer. I want to tell you a secret, how you can get a free Linux server in the cloud. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to talk about Oracle Cloud free tier, always free in fact. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, one of the most useful things you can have in the cloud is a compute instance. So you can run, you know, web servers, you can do compiling, you can do app development, you can run kind of services of any kind, any kind of, you know, MQTT services, whatever it is, email services, whatever it is that you want to run up there in a cloud instance. What that really means is Linux running on some kind of virtual machine, which means it's running on a much bigger server and you get a slice of those resources, the CPU time and the memory. Now, generally you have to pay for these things and you can get some very, very reasonable uh, offers, just a few dollars, a few euros a month to get you up and running. And if you remember a while back, I did do a video on Linode and all of the great things that they offer. However, Oracle are also into offering cloud services, but they have a free tier. In fact, it's called the always free tier. And this allows you to get for zero money, a Linux instance running up in the cloud that's yours to control and use as you wish. Okay, to sign up, you need to go to the URL that I'm showing you here on the screen, oracle.com slash cloud slash free, and you need to sign up. That means create yourself a username and password. They'll also ask you for your postal address. Now, here's the only tiny little twist in this. They will ask you for some valid banking details. That means a debit card or a credit card. Now, you won't get charged for that, but it does serve two purposes. One is it proves that you're a real person, stop spams, you don't get thousands of bots trying to create all of these free uh, instances. They're available to people like me and you. You type in your debit card or credit card number. Now they won't use it, they won't charge you for it. However, the second thing it does mean is that if you do ever upgrade, because you've, you know, you've got a side project, you've started it, and actually it's turned out that it's actually working uh, and people are interested in it and it's getting some traction, then you may need to up your resources. And well, you can do that there because you've already got it there on Oracle Cloud and you can then just upgrade to the next level of computing power or memory, whatever it is that you need. And again, they've got prices that you can look into and they can just charge your card correctly for that. But they won't charge your card unless you, it's not even if you go over it, you can't go into that unless you specifically upgrade. So don't worry about it. It's not gonna be like, oh, but you've used more than five minutes and you get charged. No, 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 no. You actually have to upgrade to that tier, but it's convenient because you can do it if you want to. Okay, so once you're all signed up and signed in, you get presented with this uh, dashboard. Now here at the top, you've got some pinned items. We're actually gonna go to instances, which is inside compute. And that here will allow us to create uh, an instance. If you can't get in through that way, if it's not there, go to compute and then either to instances or overview. If you go to overview, you get to see all your different CPU utilization over the past because you haven't got anything at the moment. Total instance zero, create an instance. It takes you back to that same page. So what we get here is this option to create uh, an instance. This is the always free uh, uh, thing that we're getting. So it's always eligible for always free. And so, down here, we can actually change what it is that we're getting. So we can go here, we're getting uh, an AMD VM standard E2 micro, one gigabyte of memory uh, with one virtual uh, CPU. Now you can change this. If you go into here, you can actually pick different types of versions of Linux. And for example, if you go to Alma Linux here, you can actually pick to have uh, an AR64 uh, uh, instance. So if you go to there, then this changes here to an ampere. And there is an advantage to this because you actually get more memory, you've got six gigabytes of memory and better network. Now, when I tried that just now, uh, there wasn't any available in the zone that I'm creating it in the geographic area. So I'm going to have to go back to having uh, an x86 version. So I'm going to go with Alma Linux 9 x86 and then we'll go ahead now now, there may be, now, here's the important thing to do. You have to download the keys because you're not going to connect to this over SecureShell using a username or password. You're going to connect using uh, a key pair. So you need to save the private key and you need to save the public key and we'll use those later. I'll show you how to use them so that you can actually connect up. Now, there may be something here in networking. I think you have to make sure you agree to all the options here. Yeah, that looks good to us. So let's go ahead and hit create. 
Okay, so there it is, as created this uh, instance. Now, of course, it's not running, but there it is uh, created. And then, of course, we need to start it in a moment and actually get it up and running. Now, all the information uh, has now appeared here. So let's go ahead and click start. So we're spinning it up. Okay, so now it's actually uh, running. So it tells you here, there's some stuff here. If you don't know how to connect, then it gives you some tutorials information here on how you need to connect. Now, one thing we're definitely gonna need the uh, public uh, the public IP address, and I'll show you how to connect to it using those keys that we downloaded. Okay, so here we are inside of PowerShell, and the first thing I'm gonna do is copy those two keys to my .ssh directory. Let's go into .ssh. Now, I downloaded into the downloads directory. That's what would normally happen when you download something. So what I wanna do is do move uh, from the downloads directory. Now, it's the ssh key, and it just gives you the date uh, so it's 2023, it's May, and it was May the 13th, dot .key to here, that's the one we need to do, and dot .key.pub dot to here. Okay, and then we can see them here, I've got other keys in here as well from other things. What I'm actually gonna do, let's go back and get the name of that instance. So this is the instance name here, so I'm just gonna copy that, so it ties up with the instance name that I'm gonna see inside of the uh, Oracle dashboard here. So let's go back to PowerShell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move SSH key 2023.05.13.key to SSH key and then just that instance name uh, dot key. And then there's the same thing with the uh, dot pub and we'll call that dot pub, and that way it's just tied up. Now you can do it however you want, this is just me uh, tying up the instance name with the particular key. Now I said we're gonna need that IP address, so we copy the IP address like that. Okay, now we're in the, the SSH directory, let's just go back up to the normal directory as if we just kind of logged in. So what you do is this, you say SSH minus I, because we're gonna be using a particular file to connect, not a username or password, and that of course is in the SSH directory, and it's called SSH key instance 2023, and then there's a 1005.key. And if you're connecting to a uh, CentOS or an Alba Linux or Oracle Linux, you do OPC as the username, and then at, and then followed by that IP address. So now we should be able to go ahead and log in. And there it goes, it's worked. So now I'm logged into my own free Linux server up in Oracle's cloud. Let's do an LS CPU. There we go, we can see it's running on a 32 core AMD. I've only got one of them, of course. If I type in top here, I can see things running. Uh, I've got one gigs of memory. Uh, and so there it is, I've actually, I can do whatever I want here. Let's do a DF uh, minus H to see what's mounted. There we go, I've got some disk space. Uh, and everything looks absolutely brilliant. So I could write, you know, a quick program. Let's make a, a, a source directory, CD source. Now I'm gonna use Vi, Vim. I've got videos on how you use that here. You could use Nano, you could use something else. Nano is not installed by default. So I'm just gonna say Vi, uh, hello w.py. I'm gonna write a Python program, press I for insert, print, uh, hello from uh, Oracle Cloud for free. Okay, too many E's there. <laughs> okay, and that's it, and then we're gonna save that, so press escape and then shift ZZ, and now I can type Python 3, hello world. Hello from Oracle Cloud for free, and obviously you can install C compilers, Go, Rust, you've always got Python there already, you know, that you can do whatever you want, and here it is. Uh, it's your own free uh, server running. Now, they do have some restrictions. If you leave it running for days and days on end without actually it doing any CPU uses, they'll send you an email saying, hey, I think you need to shut that down. So of course you should shut them down. Don't abuse the system. If you're not actually running anything, of course you could run a web server on here. You could run all kinds of things uh, from here. So uh, what we do is you can shut that down. So let's just go back to the control panel. And here you can see we can stop it, uh, reboot it. Uh, there's obviously lots of other things you do. So let's just click uh, stop here. Power, stopping the instance of shutdown of command. Yes, we want it to do that. We want to shut it. We don't want to force it off. We'll actually just set it to say the shutdown command. So it'll go ahead and it's now shutting it down. And that will stay there. And you can power it up, shut it down, use it uh, however you want. 
Okay, so there we have it, the uh, Oracle uh, free tier that allows you to have a Linux server free uh, for you to use and develop and test and try out side projects however you want. Please do tell me, what do you think of it? Do you use it? Do you find it useful? This is the first time you've heard of it and you're gonna go and give it a try. I'd love to hear your feedback. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.